Boom. We got the RS3M Super Ball Core. Let me see your ball. You ready to look at some balls? <laughs> Does it say ball in the box? Does any of these words say ball? What about on the- Right here, chill. Oh, chill. Ball. Wait, which one? It's, it's this one? one? This one. one right here? Yeah. Okay. Boom. It says ball. Hey guys, so today we're gonna to be checking out the ball core version of the RS Super. So we made a video previously on these two versions of the RS Super, the standard and the maglev one. However, we did not get the ball core version. And according to the poll we did recently, that is the version that you guys are most interested in. It's the one we're all most interested in, I think. There's also been some interesting pictures floating around about how the weight of the cube is like over 170 grams which is ridiculous and we're like very confident that that's not true. So I'm curious to see what it's actually gonna weigh. Yeah, let's just go ahead and get into it. All right, accessories, cube. This is also the first time we actually see what packaging it comes with because they didn't send it to us with the other version. So I remember this from like the GTS cubes and stuff. Yeah, this also can double as like a cool cube stand with these components at the bottom. Uh, this actually kind of feels weird. I've been solving a lot with the other RS3M Supers. So now I'm feeling like the stock matte finish again. I don't like it, <laughs> but it's okay. It's gonna wear down pretty fast. Let's just go ahead and turn this cube, see what it feels like. Okay, wow. It's very, very fast. Very clicky. Yeah, this definitely has like a higher pitch than the other cubes. It, there's like a click in there. It honestly sounds to me like it's coming from maybe the magnets not being fully secured in the corner base. Um, I'm not getting it as much on this side. Yeah, the cube is extremely speedy. Uh, quite uncontrollable right now. I'm gonna have to slow it down. Whoa! I guess I should have seen this coming from the pictures, but I guess I didn't really expect it. The interior is like a gold color. It's on the packaging too. I know, yeah. I, <laughs> but I just thought it was like a mock-up picture. Like, oh, okay, okay. Like I didn't think it was actually gonna be gold. So that's, that's cool though. You can very, very easily determine which one you have just without needing to take anything apart, right? You've got the standard super with the primary internals. The maglev has purple and then the ball core has the gold. So in terms of the weight, I can tell this is not 173 grams right off the bat, obviously. It doesn't really feel that much heavier than the maglev. So first I actually wanna weigh this cube right here. This is a Cuber's Home maglev RS3M. So this is the closest you could get to this cube because this has kind of all these additional add-ons. It's gonna add quite a bit to the weight. So this is at 94 grams. So let's see what this is. Boom, 87 grams. Yeah, not not 173. So yeah, I've seen a lot of comments of people saying that they wanna get the cube, but they're worried it's gonna be too heavy. Do not worry about it. It's actually lighter than the previous RS3M, 84. Okay, so it's really only like a couple grams heavier than the Maglev Super. So yeah, really not a big deal. So let's take a look at this ball core. Whoa. Oh, it's broken. The ball core is broken. Oh. Okay, so we're back with a new ball core version. They sent us another one, so this one is not broken. And I'm noticing on this one, that clicky sound is not there. That was just due to a broken ball core. That was why. It's also why I was only clicking on one half of the cube. I'm just going to fully disassemble this so we can get a good look at the core. So there you go, that's what the magnets in the corners look like. And this is the Cuber's Home RS3M. So you can see the resemblance. I mean, the magnet component basically looks identical. And this is the ball core. It's actually quite small. So it's really just like a very thin kind of casing on the very already very small core. The magnets are not exposed. They're actually kind of behind this thin layer of plastic. You can kind of see the outline of where they are, but you can't see the magnet itself. So my initial worry is just in the integrity of these ball cores. We got two of these cubes one of them just was completely broken. One of the magnets was just cracked off. It also was cracked in a couple other places. And this one as well also has some cracks. Even though it's not broken now, I would imagine if the cube was dropped or just 
maybe even handled too roughly, it could very well break. It kind of just seems like whatever plastic they're using is different to the piece plastic and it looks a lot more brittle. So in terms of performance, I think the main question that people are gonna have is, does the ball core actually provide more stability? Does it make the cube feel better? And it's kind of hard to tell right now. The cube is too, well, actually, no, it's not too loose. It is just really, really fast. So I think I need to compress it a bit and add some lube. I'm gonna go to like four. Yeah, that already feels a lot better. So the cube's feeling pretty scratchy and still really fast. So I think we can fix both of those problems by just adding some Mystic. Throw some in. Oh, that's a lot. Okay, that should be good. You hear the difference already. Yeah, so the cube's feeling a lot more usable now. Because it's maglev though, it's still very fast. To be honest, I'm really, like, even when I'm turning slowly, I'm not noticing any kind of additional click or any kind of really uh, strong additional magnet force from the core magnets. I'm wondering if it has to do with the fact that the magnets are covered in the core. They're covered by a layer of plastic. And in pretty much every other design, including the Cubers Home version, the magnets are pretty much exposed right next to each other. So yeah, I'm really not feeling that much of a difference between this cube and the maglev version yeah honestly the standard is still my favorite it feels the the most controllable the most usable i guess uh, let's do some solves and i'll see if i can nail down my thoughts a little bit better all right so i'm back after doing some solves on the cube and i gotta say my initial impressions are not that great uh the cube is very blocky. And I hate to say it because I, I am actually a fan of the other two versions of the cube. This cube in particular, I just can't quite get it to feel right. This cube is locking a lot on me. There's uh, a lot of solves that you'll see where I just lock up out of a good solve. And at the end, it'll transition to some solves that I did on the standard RS3M Super, which just went a whole lot better. That cube I've been solving quite a bit on and it's breaking in very, very nicely. And I also just, did not notice the ball core making any kind of difference in terms of stability. It feels really quite similar to the maglev, but somehow even more locky. So that's not really good. So honestly, of the three versions of the cube, I like the standard one, the $10 version the most. And I like this one, the ball core version, the least, which is a bit unfortunate. You would kind of expect uh, if a cube has multiple versions that the uh, most expensive, most decked out, most feature rich version of the cube is going to be the best, but it's really the opposite in this case. I actually like these in descending order. So my favorite is the original and then the maglev and then the ball core. I don't want to completely dog on the cube though. I still think it's a pretty good cube. It's just when you immediately switch from this cube to the standard one, it's like my times immediately got better, my confidence rose, and I immediately started locking less and just having less problems during last layer especially. Again, this could change with break-in time because in my opinion when I tried the original RS Super, the non-maglev one, I also thought it was a bit blocky and not that great, but my opinion shifted just as it broke in and as I did more solves with it. I think the RS cubes are cubes that change the most with break-in time. But yeah, just as of right now, judging the cube off of how it's initially performing, not really liking it too much. I think the issue with the uh, core cracking could just be fixed by them switching the plastic. It seems like the problem is just because the plastic they're using is too brittle. And maybe they just assume that because the plastic isn't touching any external components, isn't really being touched by anything, that it would be fine to use like a lower quality plastic, but it obviously is still an issue. So that is an issue that I think could just be fixed with a plastic change. But yeah, just overall, the ball core doesn't seem very necessary. It doesn't really do what I think a lot of you guys were hoping it would do, which is a bit unfortunate. So basically my verdict is if you're gonna get an RS3M Super, just get the standard one. If you do wanna get this one though, it is $20, which is a pretty good price for the features it has. The direct comparison to it, the uh, Cubers Home Maglev RS3M, this one is 25. So you are saving money and getting basically the same features. So that is definitely something to consider. So yeah, we'll leave links to all three versions of the RS Super in the description. Definitely let us know in the comments if you still plan on getting this cube and if you've gotten it, what do you think about it? Anyways, that's about it for this video. Thanks for watching guys, bye.